What's up guys and welcome to the video. Today's vehicle is a beautiful 2018 Lexus RX 350 and it's in for a full exterior detail and paint correction. Now taking a look around this Lexus and you can see it's not all that dirty. However, there are quite a few bug guts all over the front end and knowing that the owners like to keep it spotless all the time, we're gonna get it back to looking like it just drove off the lot. And now taking a closer look at the paint and unfortunately due to some improper washing techniques by the owner, there are some swirl marks in the paint already. So we're going to polish this vehicle and get the paint looking perfect again. While I do that, I'll show you guys everything you need to know about paint correction. But just before we jump into the video guys, take a quick second and subscribe to the channel and ring the bell if you haven't yet so you don't miss out on new videos like this one. And yeah, I think it's time to get started, so let's go. All right guys, so as I start on the pre-wash rinse here, I wanted to let you know that this video is a blast from the past as I recorded this all the way back in August of 2019, so about nine months ago at this point. So if you guys see some different camera angles or just overall notice it doesn't seem quite the same as my videos now, that's the explanation for it. And like you've probably noticed or saw in the title, that this is a real time video as you guys definitely seem to enjoy the other couple that I've done. So since I'm able to show you the ins and outs of paint correction in this video, I figured it was the perfect one to slow things down in. So as you guys probably already know, when I do the pre-wash rinse on a vehicle, I'm always extremely thorough. And that's because my goal with this step is to get the vehicle as clean as possible. So when I move to the wash stage, there's way less risk of the wash mitt finding dirt and rubbing it all over the paint. Now one thing you might find interesting about this particular vehicle is that out of all the vehicles that I've ever detailed in my life, this was the absolute worst for water spray back, especially off the wheels. And you maybe can't tell, but my face got sprayed dozens of times during this detail. And even nine months later, that's the one thing that I remember most about doing this vehicle. Now since the swirls in the paint you saw in the opening were caused by improper washing techniques, I figured I would go over what the proper way to wash a vehicle is, and that's first off using the two bucket method. So what that means is having one bucket with soapy water and one bucket for rinsing your wash mitt, and you should also have grit guards in the bottom of each bucket. If you guys aren't sure what those are, I've got links to them in the description for you. But basically you'll want to use a nice soft microfiber chenille wash mitt and go panel by panel rinsing your mitt after each one and of course wash the vehicle top down. 
And if you follow those steps, you will greatly reduce the chance of instilling any swirl marks in the paint. And if you're wondering why I don't put my hand inside the wash mitt, it's because I rinse the mitt so frequently that taking it off to rinse it and having to put it back on again would waste quite a bit of time. So opting for efficiency, I keep my hand out. All right, so with the vehicle completely dry now, it's time to decontaminate the paint. And to do that, I'm spraying on some quick detailer to act as a lubricant for the clay. Although you can also use soapy water and do this when you wash the vehicle. I just personally prefer to actually see what I'm doing, so I do it after. Now rubbing the clay over the paint and it's going to safely pick up any surface bonded contaminants like iron contamination, road grime, tree sap, tar, that sort of thing and this step is critical when you're going to polish paint as you want the paint perfectly clean before you start running a machine over it spinning at a few thousand rpms So as I worked my way around the vehicle with the clay, you'll notice it didn't pick up too much gunk, but still with it only being a year old when I filmed this, it's actually a lot more than you might expect. And if you didn't already know, detailing clay will come in varying levels of aggressiveness, just like sandpaper does. So I personally always prefer to use a mild clay since it won't ever cause any marring or damage to the paint. But if you choose to use a more aggressive clay, be prepared to have to follow it up by polishing the vehicle. Using mild clay allows you to do this as more of a maintenance thing every few months when there's no need to polish afterwards. However, it will take a little bit longer. Now with the vehicle clayed, I can grab my swirl finder light and inspect every inch of the paint to see what I'm dealing with. And then opening up my tickle trunk of products and because I don't know how this paint will react, I'm going to need to do a test spot to find the optimal product and pad combo. So all jokes aside of eeny meeny miny mo, once I have my polish and pad combo selected, I'll get a strip of tape down on the hood and start working on a roughly two by two section, making nice slow passes in each direction. And then once I'm done, I'll have a look with my light and inspect the results.
Now, being that I didn't get quite enough cut with that pad and could still see some swirls, I'm stepping up to a more aggressive foam cutting pad and repeating the process. And in terms of selecting the right combo, when you're doing paint correction, the goal is to find the least aggressive combo that will give you the results you need. It would be super easy to just hammer it with an aggressive polish or even a compound and cut the clear coat down really fast. However, the problem with that is that modern clear coat is extremely thin. Like I'm talking thinner than a post-it note. And when you polish, you're essentially removing a layer of clear coat to level it out in order to remove the swirls or scratches. So in order to prolong the life of the clear coat, you always want to only remove as much clear coat as is necessary. And one thing to note is that if you're ever working on older paint or don't know the history of how much a vehicle has been polished, you can use a paint depth gauge to measure the thickness of the clear coat. So that way you can be extra sure you aren't going to burn through the clear. But with a new vehicle like this, it's unnecessary as the paint has never been polished before. And in terms of how much paint I would be removing by doing a polish like this, the four to six passes that I'm making would take off maybe three to four microns of paint. So on most vehicles, you would be able to safely polish many, many times before ever burning through the clear. Alright, so satisfied with my combo, here's a look at the before and after with the right side being the corrected side and the left showing all the swirls that still need to be polished out. Okay, so now that I know the yellow pad is the clear winner, I'll start on working my way around the vehicle going section by section. And if you're wondering, yes, this is very time consuming work and generally takes many, many hours and a couple different pads to do an entire vehicle, but it does cost a lot more than just a general detail. So it does make the extra effort worth it. Now, as you may have noticed, I always start by spreading around my product over the section with the polisher around speed two to three, and then I kick it up to about five to six and I'll make anywhere from four to six overlapping passes in opposite directions. And in terms of pressure, I am putting a little bit of pressure on the polisher, but not much as the key is to let the polish and pad do the work for you. You might also notice I have a little black line drawn on my backing plate and that serves as a visual cue to me so I can always make sure my pad is spinning because if it's not, the black line isn't moving and obviously I wouldn't be polishing anything. Now, if any of you guys are inspired by watching this video and want to try polishing your own vehicle's paint, the Griot's Garage six inch polisher that I'm using here is a great choice as it's relatively inexpensive and it's served me well for years now. So if you're interested, the links to the polisher, the backing plate and foam pads that I use are all down in the description for you.
right, so finishing up the last section and with the paint polished and nearly flawless, I am moving to getting a layer of wax on the vehicle to boost the gloss and protect the paint. So using a blue foam finishing pad and the polisher set to about two to three for speed, I'll work my way around the vehicle in sections. And I unfortunately can't remember exactly which wax I was using, but I do know that I was testing some different products last August and I didn't end up loving this particular wax as it was a little bit harder to buff off than I usually like. All right, so turning to the glass now, and as you guys have heard me say before, I always use a waffle weave towel for glass as it doesn't leave any streaks or lint behind. And even though this was an exterior only detail, I always do the inside glass too. And I always make sure to roll the windows down a few inches to get along the top as it only takes a second, but it's definitely something the customer is going to notice if it's not clean. Thank you. 
Moving to all the black plastic trim, and of course, I'm using 303's aerospace protectant and a microfiber applicator pad to dress and UV protect it. And hopefully seeing some of these steps in real time gives you an idea of how long some of these steps take and just how much work goes into the details that I do. So if you've enjoyed this video, please take a quick second and let me know down in the comments. I'll absolutely make more like this for you guys if you're enjoying them. All right, moving to the last step, which is to dress the tires. And as usual, I'm using some CarPro Pearl diluted roughly two to one. And what's nice about Pearl is that it's water-based, so it won't end up slinging all over the paint, but it also comes in a concentrate and can be diluted to various strengths for use on rubber, vinyl, plastics, and leather. All right, guys, and we are done. Uh, we've got this Lexus looking super, super glossy after a full detail and a one-step polish. Uh, I'd say we probably achieved about a 95% correction rate of those swirls, so it is looking really, really good. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, please smash the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, turn the bell on if you haven't yet, and yeah, that's where I'll leave it for now. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.